All right, let's um, maybe try meta. I think meta is cheap. I mean, that's the big point there. Um, what's meta stock price now? 109. How about its rival, Tencent? Tencent's dropped as well, 277.40. Wow. So they got roughly the same enterprise value? Wow, that's crazy. That's so crazy. I think I did the Q3 earnings, but maybe not. Yeah, I think I did. There we go. I maybe even listen to it. This is like uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg conference call is basically just this over and over again. Almost, what do you see about the bears? Uh, we shut them down that way. No, we, you know, I mean, we, we just, uh, we, the bears are what we thought they were. What, what, what we thought they were. We played them in preseason. Who the hell takes a third game in a preseason like it's bull? We played them in the third game. Everybody played three quarters. The bears are who we thought they were. And that's why we took the damn field. Now. If you want to crown them, then crown their ass. But they are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. Thanks, Coach. That's basically the meta conference call. We don't even need to listen to it for Good now. afternoon. My name is Martin, and I will be your conference operator today. <laughs> they At were. Time, I would like to welcome everyone to the Who they thought they were. <laughs> All what? I'm sorry, Mr. Zuckerberg. What? Mr. Zuckerberg, I asked a specific question about the ad market. They were who they we thought they were. After the speaker's remarks, there will be a question and answer session. If you'd like to ask a question, please press the one, then the number four on your telephone keypad. This call. Will I'm be a Giants started. fan. Thank you very much, Ms. Deborah Crawford, Meta's Vice President of Investor Relations. You may begin. Yeah, it's a really Thank bad you. quarter. Good afternoon and welcome to Meta Platform's third quarter 2022 earnings conference call. Joining me today to discuss our results are Mark Zuckerberg, CEO, and Dave Weiner, CFO, Susan Lee, VP of Finance, and our incoming CFO, and Marnie Levine, Chief Business Officer, are also on the call and will join Mark and Dave for the Q&A portion. Before we get started, I would like to take this opportunity to remind you that our remarks today will include forward-looking statements. Actual results may differ materially from I don't look at energy stocks, I'm sorry. Statements. Factors that could cause these results to differ materially are set forth in today's press release and in our quarterly report on Form 10-Q filed with the SEC. Any forward-looking statements that we make on this call are based on assumptions as of today, and we undertake no obligation to update these statements no as a result of new information or future events. During this call, we may present both GAAP and non-GAAP financial measures. A reconciliation of GAAP to non-GAAP measures is included in today's earnings press release. The press release and an accompanying investor presentation are available on our website at investor.fb.com. And now I'd like to turn the call over to Mark. Hey everyone, thanks for joining today. Our community continued to grow this quarter. Uh, we now reach more than 3.7 billion people monthly across our family of apps. Uh, and while we continue to navigate some challenging dynamics, a uh, volatile macro economy, increasing competition, uh, ad signal loss, and growing costs from our long-term investments, I have to say that our product trends uh, look better from what I see than some of the commentary I've seen suggests. Um, there's been a bunch of speculation about engagement on our apps, and uh, what we're seeing is more positive. On, on Facebook specifically, the number of people using the service each day is the highest it's ever been, nearly 2 billion, uh, and engagement trends are strong. Instagram has more than 2 billion monthly actives. Uh, WhatsApp has more than 2 billion daily actives. Uh, also with the exciting trend that North America 
is now our fastest growing region. Across the family, some apps may be saturated in some countries or some demographics, but overall, our apps continue to grow from a large base. Wait, did Facebook uh, issue their first debt ever? Especially strong growth in Reels, um, and I'll share more details about that when I discuss our product priorities shortly. In terms of our business, uh, total revenue grew slightly this quarter on a constant currency basis. First ever bond we're offering. Where I think we should nice. Be, uh, but we believe that we will return to healthier revenue growth trends next year. Uh, that said, it, it's not clear that the economy has stabilized yet, so we're planning our budget somewhat more conservatively. In 2023, uh, we're going to focus our investments on a small number of high-priority growth areas. So that means that some teams will grow meaningfully, but uh, most other teams will stay flat or shrink over the next year. In aggregate, we expect... An- yeah, so Facebook has learned about debt. Mark Zuckerberg, somebody finally convinced him they need to use debt. It's the... When a company starts to use the, de- the debt capital markets, it's, uh, the growth is over. Let's use debt and buy back our stock, said some very stodgy company that can't grow by itself. But at the end of the day, like all Facebook needs to do is just continue to kind of operate this way. And it's, become a, it's okay for, to become a boring company. It's not like some like terrible thing. Um, and just like you look at the net income, right? Um, Four billion in net income, but that's just uh, reported net income. Let's go to cash flow. Cash flow is quite a bit higher. So let's see, reported net income. Okay, DNA. SBC. The funny thing about SBC is all that, uh, all those options are not going <coughs> to be exercised. So. Deferred taxes, impairment related to leases and leasehold improvements. Hmm. Well, let me just do that. Okay. Okay, it all adds up. Yeah, so cash flow was ten billion. So it was a little less than even they've they've really had in a long time. But it's still uh, still is uh, impressive business. They can keep buying the stock back for quite some time before I think they run into issues. Look at the capex though. They they put nine billion dollars of capex to work. Wow, on what? So weird. Like, what the hell are they buying? AI computers? I don't know. It seems weird. Facebook has like their own private cloud, I think, I guess. It's a huge amount of CapEx. CapEx, for those of you guys who don't know, is anything that's, um, any asset of the companies that lasts more than one year. So those would be like computers, servers for this kind of company, right? Um, So a contract is not, it it actually has to be a piece of property, plant, and equipment. So it can't be a contract with a person or something like that. I know you're just joking, but it still seems like a really bizarre, really bizarre thing for Facebook's CapEx to double. Like, what the heck are they spending on? It has to be tangible, PP&E, property, plant, equipment. And it has to have a useful life of over, over one year. Very weird. Let's look at the stock buyback. Well, they've spent... Get this, guys. $66 billion on their stock over the last uh, seven quarters. Isn't that amazing? 
Now, would they would they rather have bought for sixty six billion dollars? They could have bought Spotify. A couple times over, they could buy Activision. Uh, they could buy Roblox instead of doing the buyback. And the buyback, what's funny is the shares outstanding has only dropped from two point nine billion to two point seven billion. So it's not like they they basically bought, got to buy ten percent of the company back. So they they spent. They really overpaid for their for their buyback, but now is the time for them to buy back their stock. <laughs> With sixty billion, they could buy back a, a third of the company. Yeah, I know they can't buy anything basically because they um, they basically uh, have antitrust problems. I do think Facebook should buy a gaming company, but that's a whole other story. Um, I don't think their goal is anything other than cash flow. And these gaming companies kind of represent new platforms and metaverses where people interact, right? A lot of people will chit-chat on Roblox or some other video game, uh, Fortnite. Um, they buy Epic Games. I think that would be a good idea. Um, and, and they can't... Yeah, they should buy Take-Two, uh, which owns Rockstar, which makes Grand Theft Auto. They can't really sort of do... Um, the kind of acquisitions they'd like to do. Like, they'd like to be able to buy Pinterest or Twitter or something like that, but, you know, the FTC and other competition authorities would not like that idea. So, yeah, the first debt offering ever from Facebook. I think that's pretty important, actually. Um, and they used it to buy back, you know, they basically used it to buy back stock, which if Facebook goes from net cash to net debt, and they do just a big stock buyback. This is kind of what happened to Oracle. Um, so Oracle, for all you kids out there, it's a real company. Um, it's not a meme. And it's a company that's been around for a really, really long time. Um, and... Basically, it's kind of been this crappy, pretty crappy company. Um, they've had a, a rough time on the on the business side, but you can see the stock is one of the greatest stocks of all time, right? Um, and one of the reasons is they have a very stable business, and when you have a really stable business you can do a lot of financial engineering. And the financial engineering they've been able to do, this was the dot-com bubble, by the way, boys and girls. This is what I lived through. It was really amazing. Look how many years it took. It took 18 years for the stock to go back to its bubble price. And that, most stocks did not have this kind of luck. So they just kept buying stock back. And and basically, I think that's what Zuckerberg should do. They went from net cash to net, um, to net debt. Um, and maybe that's what, what Zuck should do here. Just keep buying back stock. You know, they don't need to grow revenue and earnings for the social media platform. They could start a whole new other business. They just, they're, they've, they're a victim of their own success, you know, like, there's something about being something like kind of about being too successful. But yeah, that CapEx spend is atrocious. They still have this massive net cash position. Why am I getting different? So let's see here. Oh, I have a hundred here. It's one hundred and eight, isn't it? In it, really one hundred and ten. Okay. So we got a quarter billion enterprise value. Yeah, I mean, I had it as a double before. I still sort of have it as a double.
I think the they're getting LIBOR plus or SOFR plus one or whatever. Typical kind of high rated company. Let's see what the Facebook uh, debt uh, coupon was. <laughs> bond, let me say bond coupon. 3.6%. T plus 75. So the meta, the big meta competitors, uh, we should look at gas app. So gas up your friends. Oh, okay. This is like a old, from a boy in 11th grade should DJ every party, get clues who it is. From a girl in 10th grade, who do you secretly admire? Ooh, Andy Fitzgerald, yeah. Uh, gas up your friends. Their smile makes my heart melt. Kevin, Andy, Brett, or Casey? Oh my god. Um, it does seem like a kid's app, but maybe that's the point. Should we install it? Gas is made by X and X Facebook guy, I believe. Hive Social, what the fuck is that? Profile music, text and image posts, polls, Q&A, and so much more. Easily keep up with friends. With our chronological feed, you'll never miss a post. One of the biggest issues with algorithmic is not being shown media that you want to see as your account gets heavily targeted, no shadow banning. Or higher priority, all friends are displayed fairly in chronological order. That's it? That's your big thing? <laughs> Sounds like a... Hive. I mean, they're number one. Uh, uh, this is not the right hive. Let me go into my crunch base. Gmail. My, okay, let's see. Hive. Hive, 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 hive. There's too many hives. Hive Digital Media. Hive Media Group. Hive, 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 hive. There's 10 hives. What the heck? How many hives? I need hive social media. Where is it? This is ridiculous. Hive social, let me try that out. Even Hive social has too many things. All right, let's try this. Hive social company. Total alternative, Hive social is having a viral sign up moment. I guess the media is trying to promote Hive as an alternative to Twitter because they're mad at Twitter. I hate that. What is Hive Social? Everything to know about the Twitter alternative. Basically, they're doing their job for them. The Twitter rival explained. Please join it. Two college students with a new approach. Oh, okay. <laughs> Founder Raluca is gifted an iMac and begins to self-teach Swift. This is uh, two college students. First check. Is 
So this is a year old app, basically. I don't understand. First check was before May. Okay, then our dev is bought, brought on board. February, this is, is this going backwards in time? Okay, good. So we st they started in 2019 when one person learned how to program. Then there was a first app. It looks like it's been number one on the app store before. I don't know, it looks like a dog to me. I'm gonna put it in here. So we get gas, let's look at gas. Ah, uh, gas, social, financing, let's see. That's not gonna work. Gas, app. Okay, former Facebook manager started America's top new app. You check out the iPhone, you mysteriously looking looking app, gas, not cheap gasoline, it's top amongst high schoolers, created by a former meta product manager. Gas's hook is positivity. It asks high schoolers to send compliments through polls. Okay. There's a limited set of options uh, given by the company. Like this person is the best DJ at a party or this person is likely to be a millionaire. Okay. It's similar to TBH. Facebook bought TBH in 2017. Raise self-esteem and spread positivity. Gas is self-funded. Users can pay $7 a week for a subscription called God Mode that gives them hints about who voted for them. Okay, interesting. Crypto billionaires trying to fix the industry's hacking problem. Oh, sweet. Thank you, Sam. Sam Bankman Freed. Oh, yeah, please fix the hacking problem. Maximum $5 million bounty. It should be more of a minimum. <laughs> Sorry for that. Okay, so we got WhatsApp, Facebook, Telegram. I have to include Telegram. It's sort of got a weird. Um, okay, got Be Real. Peach was an old one. Of course, Twitter. Um, you know, the dating apps count too. Wiz. Isn't that synonym for urination? Life 360. Okay, we got Google Meet. Um, I guess we can include Zoom, right? It's sort of a social thing. Teleconference software, meeting software accounts, I would say. And then Mastodon. Anything else? I'd like to see all. Okay. Um, text now, send it. Truth social. Signal like that. Uh, group me. You guys heard of any of these? 
Block it, widget, text me, beagle lie, plenty of fish. There we go. Plenty of fish. That might be owned by Match for all we know. Um, Skype, of course, is Microsoft, right? Band? Band is Nover, so I have Nover up here or somewhere here. I think it's, uh, where's Nover? Nover is here somewhere. E commerce, maybe? Maybe I put Nover in media, which would probably be in here too. I have Truth Social up there. Nover's a Korean company. We got BLK, which I believe is a match. This is dating for black singles. We got Tumblr. Is Tumblr private or is that Yahoo? I think that, that they, what happened to Tumblr? Um, Wink. These things are really, uh, of course WeChat, that's, uh, WeChat is Tencent. Oh, I forgot Grindr is public now, right? So we gotta add Grindr. Hilly, kick, uh, Yubo. That, have you guys heard of any of these? Monkey Run. Monkey Run sounds fun. Chispa. That's uh, also uh, Match.com. Um, line is Naver as well. Or is line over? Yes. It's a big Korean social media company. Match. Yik yak. There's so many of these. Three sum, three fun, three some couples dating. Okay, I might download that just for research, research purposes. Got to look into the competitors of Meta. You know, it's. Uh, I think I, I thought I had Pinterest. There it is. So, Reddit's definitely going public. You're right. There's Reddit for science. Woo plus. These are. For curvy women, I'm gonna add woo plus here. Uh, swiper, fishbowl, cougar dating app, cougar D. Okay, I'm gonna check that one out too. Uh, fizz. Anybody can make one of these, right? Glow, Ashley Madison. I thought they had bigger problems. Stir, these are, this is dating for single parents. Zeusk, social dating app. Um, I mentioned three fun. <laughs> Upward, a Christian dating app. All right, so yeah, a lot of competition. I don't know if Hive Social is gonna last or not, but it doesn't it doesn't sound like it. So one of the big things about Facebook is trying to understand their actual ad product side. We all kind of like viscerally understand their um, social media side, which is a very different thing from their ad business. 
because we, we don't see the ad interfaces and the ad kind of product and we're not ad buyers, right? So it's, it's always been a difficulty with, with things like Google and um, Google and Facebook because you, you, you have to sort of think about that part of the business, which is basically the only part of the business that matters. Um, and it's, it's very hard to do so without sort of separating out the, the sort of rest of the business. Let's see here. Uh, U.S. and Canada, 11,966. That's a different number from what I have here. For last year. Last year it says 12,668. Isn't that odd? Um, Europe, 5,996. Last year it was 7,088. Is recharacterized. I think seem to recall something like they, they changed their definitions of these, which is uh, a little weird, <laughs> say the least. Asia Pack has also changed quite a bit. Asia Pack is growing for Facebook. That's a good sign, I think. Sixty-five ninety-two, and then finally, rest of the world. Um, oh, that's not, oh, I see what's going on here. This is all revenue, not just uh, ads. This is all revenue. That makes sense. All right. Let's see if they just do ad revenue, that'd be good. Look at the property plan and equipment. So server and network assets, uh, buildings, mostly server and network assets, construction and progress, data centers, there's building data centers. I guess this is for AI and stuff like that. Really out of control. They gotta slow that down. If the revenue isn't gonna come with Oh, here are the, the bonds and the interest rates. 3.5% for 2027, 3.85% for 2032. They have 2052 bonds. Uh, it's 30 years from now, trading at 4.5%. And 2062, well, issued, I should say, not trading, at 4.65. Lend your money to Mark Zuckerberg. Probably more trustworthy than Sam Bankman. Right, Reality Labs, I've got all that, I think, 285. Reality Labs is, is doing surprisingly poorly. Let me see, actually, if I can do, like, Reality Labs six months, year over year. Smooth out any, like, launch. So Q3, okay, yeah, like this. Still down 15% if you take two quarters, so I guess the Oculus launch is really kind of, people are getting bored of it. I guess they, they do have a new new product, so maybe that, that's what's going on. They're just saving all their bullets for the big new product launch. But it is telling, right? You've got $9 billion in net income from the family. Family operating income, which was uh, 13 billion down to 9 billion, but still reliable 9 billion a year, right, is 36 billion. So Facebook seven times earnings. Woo! Seven times earnings. Wow. And revenue is not falling off a cliff. It's kind of stable. It's not growing, but it grew a lot after the pandemic. So when the revenue shoots up like crazy and it doesn't shoot back down, it just kind of hangs in at that really high level. That's, I mean, to me, that's a good thing. I don't see why that's a bad thing. 
people are really uh, losing their minds over this, I think. We probably expanded a little too fast um, with the CapEx and the employee spend, but I don't know. Oh yeah, I was uh, in the middle of uh, Im uh, implementing the cash flow statement. Let's see, so here's the DAP 2930. Again, what, how many companies have this kind of trend? You know, people, oh, with face people aren't using Facebook. Well, what does this look like? We have three billion people using the product every single day. It's amazing. Family map is almost four billion. It's just nuts. Yeah, so revenue is, is, you know, was in this 20 billion range. You can't see this part of the chart, but bumped up to this 28 billion range and it's been hanging in there just fine. So to me, there's the daily actives, 1984. How much is US of that? 197, 2960, US, Canada, MAU. We got Asia continuing to grow. Rest of the world continuing to grow. Europe is flat. Here's the DAU 2958. And this is uh, this is just Facebook. So this is not Instagram. This is not WhatsApp. So. The, the Facebook MAU is the highest number it's ever been, 266. Which for US and Canada is damn near most of the country, right? I mean, if you think, what's the population of Canada? 30 million? 74% of America and Canada. 38 million for Canada. 332, 332 and 38. 332 plus 38 is 370. So they have literally 72% of every man, woman, and child alive. So that literally includes babies, people up, to, you know, ages 6, 10, whatever. <laughs> if you excluded those, if you exclude the bottom 10%, right? the bottom 10% of the population, which presumably is too young to be on a computer, you've got, they've got 80% of all people. And that sounds about right. If you think about your weird friends that don't have Facebook, that's, that's about it, right? All right. Rest of world ads, US ads. All right, US, this is just revenue. This isn't just ads though. I need the uh, total number, but this includes shit like this includes reality. Oh nope, here it is. Perfect. Twelve seven six. The ad number is in black and the reality number is up here and the total number is up here. Perfect. That's exactly what I needed. So if you look at the US and Canada ad revenue number, it peaked at 15 billion in the December quarter. We're about to see another December quarter. But if you look at year over year, it essentially is flat. 13.1 billion versus 12.8 billion, pretty much the same. Here it was down a little bit, here it was up a little bit, here it was up quite a bit. So this is like pandemic peak. Um, we don't know what Q4 will look like, although let's get the guidance. Uh, they gave guidance. Uh, 30 to 32 and a half billion. So looks like they're guided to negative 2%, which is basically flat. Um, yeah, what a great stock. This is like gotta be my, this to me like would be a top holding. This isn't like a no-brainer. You, you have to be dumb not to be long Facebook. You have to wait. You're going to have to wait for years, uh, possibly, for people to get interested in the stock again. 
but that's okay. Investing is a waiting game. Investing transfers money from the patient, the impatient to the patient. So be patient and money will be transferred to you. Assuming you've made the right decisions. You can be as patient as you want on AMC, you're probably not gonna get paid. <sighs> okay, I think I got everything I need from the queue. We won't get the um, next quarterly report until January, so it'll be a little while. We're in the midst of Q4. Good time to touch up our models. Get the last pieces of the cash flow statement together. Let's see, got the debt part, leases. Overdraft and other financing activities. Cool. Um, hmm. Yes, okay, that's the right number. Uh, exchange rates. Okay, also correct. Great, now we just need headcount. Um, Look at the headcount. It's wild. 87, wow. Look at all the people they added for no reason. They probably did not need to do that. They have to do what Elon's doing. They basically have to just cut half the company's employees and just wing it. We published a newsroom post announcing a planned layoff. See, that's what's so crazy to me, right? Like you, you go from 60,000 people to 90,000 people and then you fire all of them. Like, does that make sense, sense to you guys? Like. We're going to hire 20,000 people. Ah, you know what? We're going to fire them. Very weird. I mean, it's 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 better than not Reacting, right? I guess you better. You know, if you're going to make a mistake, you might as well fix it. Um, Mark Zuckerberg just shared the following with Meta employees: Today, I'm sharing some of the most difficult changes we've made in Meta's history. I've decided to reduce the size of our team by about 13 percent and let more than 11,000 of our talented employees go. We are also taking a number of additional steps to become a leaner and more efficient company by cutting discretionary spending and extending our hiring freeze through Q1. I want to take accountability for these decisions and for how we got here. I know that this is tough for everyone, and I'm especially sorry to those impacted. How did we get here? At the start of COVID, the world moved rapidly online, and the surge of e-commerce led to outsized revenue growth. Many people predicted this would be a permanent acceleration that would continue even after the pandemic ended. But I did too. So I made the decision to significantly increase our investments. Unfortunately, this did not play out the way I expected. Not only has online commerce returned to prior trends, but the macroeconomic downturn, increased competitions, and ad signal loss have caused our revenue to be much lower than I expected. I got this wrong, and I take responsibility for that. In this new environment, we need to become more capital efficient. We've shifted more of our resources onto a smaller number of high priority growth areas, like our AI discovery engine, our ads and business platforms, and our long-term vision for the metaverse. We've cut across our business, including scaling back budgets, reducing perks, and shrinking our real estate footprint. We're restructuring teams to increase our efficiency. 
But these measures alone won't bring our expenses in line with our revenue growth. So I made the hard decision to let people go. How will this work? There's no good way to do a layoff, but we hope to get all the relevant information to you as quickly as possible, and then do whatever we can to support you through this. Everyone will get an email soon, letting you know what this layoff means for you. After that, every employee will have the opportunity to speak with somebody to get their questions answered and join information sessions. Some of our details in the US include severance. We will pay 16 weeks of base pay, plus two additional weeks for every year of service with no cap. PTO, we'll pay for all remaining PTO time. RSU vesting, everyone impacted will receive their November 15th, 2022 vesting. Health insurance, we'll cover the cost of healthcare for people and their families for six months. Career services, we'll provide three months of career support with an external vendor, including access to unpublished job leads. Immigration support, I know this is especially difficult if you're here on a visa. There's a notice period before termination and some visa grace periods which means everyone will have time to make plans and work through their immigration status. We have dedicated immigration specialists to help you based, help guide you based on what you and your family need. Outside the U.S., support will be similar, and we'll follow up soon with separate processes that take into account local employment laws. We made the decision to remove access to most meta systems for people leaving today, given the amount of access to sensitive information. But we're keeping email addresses active throughout the day so people can say farewell. While we're making reductions in every organization across both the family of apps and reality labs, some teams will be affected more than others. Recruiting will be disproportionately affected since we're planning to hire fewer people next year. We're also restructuring our business teams more substantially. This is not a reflection of the great work these groups have done, but what we need going forward. The leaders of each group will schedule time to discuss what this means for your team over the next couple days. The teammates who will be leaving us are talented and passionate and have made an important impact on our company and community. Each of you have made, helped make Meta a success. Not as much as me, but each of you have helped. And I'm grateful for it, because I'm one of the richest people there is. I'm sure you'll go on to do great work in other places. What other changes are we making? I view layoffs as a last resort. So we, continued, so we decided to rein in sources, other sources of costs before letting teammates go. Overall, this will add up to a meaningful cultural shift in how we operate, even though I doubled CapEx spending year over year. <laughs> for example, as we shrink our real estate footprint, we've, we're transitioning to desk sharing for people who already spend most of their time outside the office. We'll roll out more cost-cutting changes like this in the coming months. We're also extending our hiring freeze through Q1 with a small number of exceptions. I'm going to watch our business performance, operational efficiency, and other macroeconomic factors to determine whether and how much we should resume hiring at that point. This will give us the ability to control our cost structure in the event of a continued economic downturn. It will also put us on a path to achieve a more efficient cost structure that we outlined to investors recently. This is a sad moment, and there's no way around that. To those who are leaving, I want to thank you again for everything you've put into place, into this place. We would not be here today without your hard work, and I'm grateful for your contributions. To those who are staying, I know this is a difficult time for you too. Not only are we saying goodbye to people we're worked, we've worked closely with, but many of you also feel uncertainty about the future. I want you to know that we're making these decisions to make sure our footing is strong. I believe we are deeply underestimated as a company today. Billions of people use our services to connect and our communities keep growing. Our core business is among the most profitable ever built with huge potential ahead. And we're leading in developing the technology to define the future of social connection and the next computing platform. We do historically important work. I'm confident that if we work efficiently, we'll come out of this downturn stronger and more resilient than ever. So. In 2023, um, as either you know, roughly the same size or uh, even a slightly smaller organization than we are today. Three of the primary areas we're going to focus on are our AI discovery engine that's powering real okay? and other recommendation experiences, uh, our ads and business messaging platforms, and our future vision for the metaverse. The internal indications I've seen uh, suggest we're doing leading work and are on the right track with these investments. So I think that we should keep investing heavily in these areas. As I've shared before, 
Uh, our goal is to grow family of apps operating income such that even with our AI infrastructure and reality labs investments, uh, we can still meaningfully grow our overall company operating income in the long term. Our current surge in CapEx is largely due to building out our AI infrastructure, and we would expect CapEx to come down as a percent of revenue over the long term. Uh, we expect Reality Labs expenses uh, will increase meaningfully again in 2023, um, with the biggest drivers of that being the launch of the next generation of our consumer Quest headset, uh, and hiring that has been done in 2022, but for which we're going to be paying the first full year of salaries uh, next year. Um, more broadly, beyond 2023, we expect to pace Reality Labs investments to ensure that we can achieve our goal of growing overall company operating income. Our capital allocation philosophy over the long term is to allocate a portion of the profits generated from the family of apps towards these future focused areas, while enabling a greater return of capital to shareholders. All right, now I'd like to share some updates on the progress that we're seeing in, in, in these product areas. Our AI discovery engine uh, is playing an increasingly important role across our products, especially uh, as advances enable us to recommend more interesting content from across our networks and feeds uh, that used to be primarily driven just by the people and accounts you follow. So this, of course, includes Reels, which continues to grow quickly across our apps, uh, both in production and consumption. There are now more than 140 hey. billion Reels plays across Facebook and Instagram uh, each day. That's a 50% increase from six months ago. Reels is incremental to time spent on our apps. Uh, the trends look good here, and we believe that we're gaining time spent share on competitors like TikTok. Over time, uh, I expect a few things to set our products apart here. First is that our discovery engine work allows us to recommend all types of content beyond Reels as well, including photos, text, links, communities, short and long form videos, and more. Second is that we can mix this content along posts from, uh, alongside posts from your family and friends, um, which can't be generated by AI alone. And third, as more social interactions move to messaging, uh, we're developing a flywheel between discovery and messaging that are gonna make these apps stronger. Um, on Instagram alone, people already reshare reels uh, one billion times a day through uh, DMs. Moving to monetization, uh, I've discussed in the past how the growth of short-form video creates near-term challenges. Um, since Reels doesn't monetize at the rate of feed or stories yet, uh, that means that as Reels grows, uh, we're displacing revenue from higher monetizing surfaces. And I think this is clearly the right thing to do um, so that we Reels can grow with the demand that we're seeing. Um, but closing this gap is, is also a high priority. Um, even with the progress we've made, uh, we're still choosing to take a more than $500 million quarterly uh, revenue headwind with this shift, uh, but we expect to get to a more neutral place over the next 10, um, sorry, 12 to 18 months. Um, I, I mentioned last quarter that Instagram Reels had crossed a $1 billion annual revenue run rate. Um, you know, we continue scaling monetization across both Instagram and Facebook, and, and the combined run rate across uh, these apps is now $3 billion. Uh, beyond Reels, messaging is another major monetization opportunity. Uh, billions of people and millions uh, of businesses this is for use finance. WhatsApp and Messenger every day. This is finance chat, so if you're not going to talk finance, that, this is not the place to valuable be. Experiences. Uh, we started with click-to-message okay. ads, Sorry. which lets businesses run ads on Facebook and Instagram. That oh man, now I'm stuck talking like WhatsApp Mark Zuckerberg. Instagram Direct, so they can communicate with customers directly. And this is one of our fastest growing ads products with a $9 billion annual run rate. Um, and this revenue is, is mostly on click to Messenger today since we started there first, but click to WhatsApp uh, just passed a $1.5 billion run rate and growing more than 80% uh, year over year. Paid messaging um, is another opportunity that we're starting to tap into and it, it continues to grow quickly, but from a smaller base. Uh, we're, we're putting the foundation in place now to, to scale this with key partnerships like Salesforce, uh, which lets all businesses on their platform use WhatsApp as the main messaging service to answer. Yeah, um, I still think uh, $200 a share is the right price for Facebook, and it's trading at around 100 So 
around a double, and I don't assume any heroic revenue growth going forward, which I don't think anybody should. I even assume they decline revenues for a couple, well, next year and the year after, and then they kind of return to growth, but very modest growth. I assume they shut down Oculus um, after losing money on it for a couple years, which is immaterial. I mean, Oculus, Meta, all their extra products, projects don't really do anything. And they just buy back stock. Sort of like, like I said, the same playbook Oracle went through over the last decade. Um, hard to innovate, so you just kind of do that. I listened to the whole call um, earlier. If you guys want to listen to that call, go ahead and do it yourself. Um, I'm going to pop in one of the 10 Qs, 10 Ks, just because I want to flesh out this model a little bit more. Maybe I'll get some insight. Maybe I won't. But it won't take but a second. Uh, I don't know how to use the new sec.gov thing. Um, I just want 10K. You know, I can scroll down. 